All right, so now I want to tell you about a bunch of tender mercies that I have experienced in relation to working on Prepare to Serve. Um, I'd say I'm probably the biggest fan of Prepare to Serve. I've, I've just seen so many awesome things come from it and so many blessings have come to, to me personally and to my family's life as we've dedicated ourselves to this project. So um, here we go. I'll just kind of list off tender mercies. So back in 2006, I felt super strongly that I needed to look into broadcast journalism. If I hadn't done that, none of this would have ever happened. That was a tender mercy to, to have some inspiration to help guide me in, in these decisions. Um, so, uh, you know, after I felt like I needed to work on this project, um, you know, I told my boss we were going to quit um, my, my job working custodial at the MTC. And two days after I told him that, on Sunday, we got an unexpected call from a relative offering us to uh, have free rent uh, living with grandma and helping out and that was a completely unexpected blessing that is just was hugely needed one because we had zero income at all and uh, you know the amount we saved per month um, by not having to pay for rent was about the same I would have made with my on-campus job so that was a huge tender mercy and we lived with grandma for about three years and that was just such a blessing um, another tender mercy was two weeks after uh, that, uh, there was the age change announcement in October of 2012 um, when President Monson announced that young men could leave at age 18 and young women at age 19. And that was a tender mercy for a lot of reasons. One, because there's more pre-missionaries to watch the videos. I think it was probably easier to find sponsors of Prepare to Serve because there's just a general excitement about missionary work. I think it probably also helped to find, you know, return missionaries or return missionary sisters to interview. Um, it was just a huge, huge blessing to help us get on our feet. Um, also, my home teaching companion, a uh, shout out to Brian Braun, uh, great guy, but he was, uh, he helped mentor me to figure out stuff with HTML and CSS and I took a beginner PHP class with him that was way over my head because I knew nothing about programming or web languages and uh, he helped me get through that and figure out a lot of problems on my own and with his help and I just think what a cool thing that you know Heavenly Father I think he had the foresight to somehow get me to be home teaching companions with someone who could kind of mentor me and help me out with the website at the exact time I needed it to get it started. Um, there's been so many blessings. I mean, there's been other people who helped me get WordPress set up. Uh, Heather from the Morgood Foundation, she helped me get WordPress multi-site set up when, the, when we had multiple domains on the site. My brother John has been a huge help in getting prepared to serve, figured out and fixing problems and other friends and some sponsors, they've all helped us out. Um, some other tender mercies. Uh, my stake president, <laughs> when I got started, he was one of the... Um, one of the directors in the missionary department, um, you know, that's cool. I had someone that I could talk to who had, you know, a connection to the missionary department, which I did not have any, but I, I kind of really wanted to have some sort of connection so that they could be aware of what I'm doing and there could be open communication there. And I just think that was a, a really awesome blessing. Um, also, I think just socially, another tender mercy, how the Lord's kind of prepared the ways, I, I think, a project like Prepare to Serve 10 years ago wouldn't have been possible. Like, I just think they're, the church's culture and, and our culture as a society has opened up to embrace social media as a legitimate thing and not something dirty or dark uh, or to be afraid of. And I think there's so much value in having really genuine stories that are uplifting. Um, and I just, I feel like that's the timing. I just feel like Heavenly Father, you know, He inspired me at timing, you know, um, that was just perfect, I think, culturally for it to be able to work. Uh, another tender mercy, uh, YouTube used to have a bunch of limits. One of the limits being that you could only create, I think it was 20 playlists, 20 groups of videos per account. And they have since lifted that limit our channel personally, you know, our channel has more than 2,000 playlists. 
every interview we do is in a playlist, plus travel videos that we've grouped um, by topic, by country and state, those are in playlists as well. And so if it weren't for that, um, I mean, it just wouldn't, the navigation, the content structure, how it gets marketed out there, it just wouldn't have worked uh, very well. Um, another tender mercy is uh, that Google Fiber came to Provo. I, I remember when I got started with this project, I was uploading some videos and it would take five to 10 hours per interview to upload. And I couldn't do it from home. I could only do it from, you know, like BYU's library where they had pretty snappy internet, but it would still take five to 10 hours, which is kind of ridiculous when you're trying to upload hundreds of interviews. And I prayed very sincerely that Heavenly Father would prepare the way for the technological infrastructure to improve so that this project would be possible. And um, I really believe that Google Fiber was an answer to prayer um, and has facilitated this project and probably other good things as well. Um, yeah, going from you know high speed internet speeds of like 30 megabits per second download speed and like maybe five or 10 megabits per second upload speed to a thousand megabits per second download speed and a thousand megabits per second upload speed which for most people probably isn't important but if you're uploading hundreds of hours of hd video to youtube um, the upload speeds make a huge difference where now i can upload the videos from home on our imac and we have an old iMac and we're doing it via Wi-Fi and instead of taking five to 10 hours to upload an interview, you know, it takes most time just to write the file. Once it's written, it uploads each little segment, you know, in like a minute. <laughs> it's, it's really fast, um, so much faster. It saves me probably five to 10 times the amount of time that used to be without Google Fiber. So that's a huge, huge tender mercy. Another tender mercy is, um, that semester I needed to take my capstone class. I was able to take a, a, a brand new capstone class where I was able to experiment with blogging and WordPress for the whole semester. Instead of having to go to, a, you know, go and work in the lab as a producer or reporter. And I knew by then that I didn't want to do that for my career, that I wanted to look more into the online web um, publishing. And, uh, it just came at the perfect time. The first semester is offered. I was able to jump in it. It counted towards my graduation. I learned skills I needed to learn about social media and WordPress. Um, another tender mercy. I hope I'm not boring you with all these tender mercies. Uh, Facebook groups. Up until recently, you could only join 300 Facebook groups, which is a lot. I mean, who would need to join more than 300 groups? They recently lifted that. So now I believe you can join up to 6,000 Facebook groups. That is insane. I'll tell you the cool thing about that is, uh, so there's about 415 active missions, I think. And then, you know, there's another few dozen old missions um, that have since changed names or have been dissolved or whatever. Um, it's been my experience that on Facebook, every mission, almost every mission has uh, several Facebook alumni groups, you know, you know, the Argentina Neocan mission under President Peterson from 2009 to 2012, like that's one group for that one mission, but there's also a bunch of other different groups. Um, so, you know, on average, there might be five to 10 groups, you know, 10 times 400 is 4,000. And um, uh, Facebook groups have been hugely um, useful for us to help um, crowdsource content on our website. Um, for example, surveys, uh, we've been, we made a Google Doc, like a Google survey that people can take. They click on the link and they just fill out, you know, their experiences, insights, cool facts about their mission. A lot of the same content that our video interviews cover, but um, through text. And we've collected, I think about 2,700 or 800, somewhere around there, written surveys, um, some of which are up to like 5,000 words long. I mean, a lot are just like, you know, a few hundred words long or, or a thousand words long total. There's like a dozen questions, but we've probably collected about a million words of content to publish on our mission pages of like what to bring, you know, what to pack, sister missionary tips, uh, 
um, spiritual experiences, crazy experiences, funny experiences, funny language mistakes, uh, interesting facts about the mission and the church, the culture, the food, things that you love about them, your testimony, advice, um, what areas you served in. Anyway, it's been hugely helpful. And the only way that's been possible, it would have been a nightmare to try to um, join 300 Facebook groups at a time and then leave all the groups and then rejoin and then you know, that would have been a nightmare. But now I can just request to join all of the Facebook groups for missions. And then if they allow me into the group, I can just be like, hey guys, we're trying to collect a bunch of surveys to publish on your missions page on our website. Uh, would you be willing to take a few minutes and fill out a survey? That would be super helpful. Um, and they can choose to answer one question or all of the questions. And most of the people answer most of the questions. And some of them get pretty thorough and I think they enjoy it. Kind of jogs their memory a little bit. Um, it reminds them about their mission. Anyway, that has just been such a blessing. Uh, there's just so many blessings. I feel like I could go on and on. And I found... I, know, I found this thing that where, you know, if Heavenly Father inspires you to do something and you commit to do it 100%, like to the point of like, I'm going to do this even if it means I'm going to fail, I'm going to like give it 100% my honest effort. My experience has been that Heavenly Father will prepare the way. If that's what you believe he'll do, then he will. And you just, I believe he wants us to trust him confidently. Um, you know, in choosing a career, um, I think it's important to ask, you know, uh, from a regret standpoint, you know, what will, when I'm 80, will I have regret, regretted not having given it a chance to live my dream, to make a difference in the world? Uh, I think it's also good to ask the question like, you know, what is it that I could do in the world with my talents and interests and experience and passions that an inspiration that would do the most good in the world? And am I doing that for my job or am I just doing my job currently because it's more easy to get money. Um, and, you know, if you, if you view your, your work as an opportunity to serve and make a difference in the world, and you just trust that Heavenly Father will provide for you, He's the King of the universe. You know, like He says in Doctrine and Covenants, what is property unto me? Like, in my mind, you know, He has complete control over the armies of the, of the earth, and He can take care of a bird, and he, He's aware of us, and if we pray to Him and trust in Him, He can just totally prepare the way before us to do whatever we should do. And I just, I have a strong testimony that if we really desire to make a difference in the world, we can pray. And if we also, if we strive to be worthy of the inspiration um, of the Spirit, He can guide us. And if we just follow the Spirit, desire it, and are willing to work hard and sacrifice, anything's possible with God. And I just say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.